Hey guys, uh, this is the start of a beginner series and I'm just going to go through some uh, steps and stuff for uh, beginners and um, one of the most important things and the things that people struggle with the most when they're first starting is centering. So this video is going to be about centering and uh, we'll go through a couple different methods on centering. Um, but first, before you even get started on the wheel, um, an important part of centering for, especially for people just starting out, is uh, wedging. And wedging does a couple of things. Um, it wakes the clay up, so um, when you get clay out of a bag, it's been sitting um, for probably quite a while, and all of the clay particles are packed together really tightly. And um, when you're throwing, if you just cut off a chunk from the bag and start throwing with it, um, those chunks are going to be harder to work with than um, than the parts that are woken up, which would be the outside. When you're centering, would be the outside parts that your hands are touching. So uh, you might center a ball, and then when you open it, you'll run into some hard chunks. Um, <clears throat> that's not good, and um, I think that a lot of people skip the wedging step. And you don't have to do fancy spiral wedging or anything like that. I'm just going to go through the uh, ram's head. Um, or duck face uh, wedging, and that's plenty good enough to wake up the clay and uh, and kind of get it um, all the particles loose up loosened up. Um, so wedging um, it loosens up the particles. It also evens out the moisture in the um, in the chunk of clay. Um, even uh, pugged clay in a bag. Um, it what happens is that when it sits and settles the outside um, and the top, you know, however the bag was sitting, is going to be uh, a little bit drier with less moisture in it than the rest of the clay. So wedging um, helps eliminate that too. And then when you get into like spiral wedging or even with ram's head wedging, you can um, start aligning the particles in a, in a spiral. <clears throat> and I, I'm not sure how much that helps when you're doing stuff on the wheel just because um, when you're on the wheel working with the clay, it's going to align itself into a spiral anyway. Um, but yeah, so we're just going to, uh, I'll, I'll put up my other camera, point it at my wedging table, and we'll just kind of go through wedging. Um, what I like to do is I like to wedge a large chunk of clay and then break it off into uh, sections that I'm going to use. So what, what I'll do is I'll wedge a big piece of clay here, and then I'll, I'll take two pounds off, and then we'll work with centering that. So yeah, I'm going to go grab my other camera. All right, we're over here at my other camera. Um, I know you can't see me right now, but um, but yeah. So I've got like a big chunk of clay here. It's just what was left in the bottom of a bag. Um, let me weigh it here for a second. Just got my scale here in the corner. Uh, looks like it's uh, four and a half pounds. So um, this is a good size chunk to work with when you're uh, when you're gonna wedge some clay. As you can see, I took a chunk out of the corner here, probably for a handle or something. Anyway, so get your clay. This is a this is just a plywood wedging board. Um, you can see some like half used bags of clay here. You know, nice and messy uh, surface there. But this is kind of you know, this is just my wedging table. I don't do any like hand building or anything on it. So um, all my clay I weigh and measure on this thing. Anyway, so with a ram's head, so. You just grab your clay. Um, if you've got a long piece like this, uh, it's easier to start with it um, the long way facing you. So you just take your two hands and push away from you. And then when you bring it back up, it's important not to fold it. So you, wanna, you want this part to be pushed forward again. So push forward again. And you can see this is the first push. And then you can see the spiral for the second push. You just push it up again and back down. Now you can see there's kind of two chunks here from the, the different wedges. So you just keep going at it like this. When you when you grab it up here, you want to hold the sides in with your with your hands nice and tight. And when you push down, just push forward and down. And you can see already on the side there, it's starting to spiral up. So 
you just have at it. When you when you're pushing back down, you want to avoid trapping any air in here. So you just keep doing it. You're not folding it. You're pushing. You're you're spinning it up and you're pushing it down. And it's called a ram's head because. Basically, these would be the horns and this would be the face, but I think it looks more like a duck face. What about you? That's the duck bill. And there's the, the eyes there, but, but yeah. Just do that. Um, and then when you want to uh, throw with it or you're done wedging, you just lightly roll it up into a cylinder like that okay I'm gonna get another angle on this straight down so that um, it's easier to see and hopefully I can flip it upside down in uh, in editing so let's do that all right so from above um, we'll wedge it this way this time so Pushing down and forward, down and forward, down and forward, down and forward, and remember to keep your hands on the sides of this up here, otherwise it'll get flatter and flatter, it'll get wider and wider, and it'll be a lot harder to control, so I'll just do this um, maybe 20 times or so. That should get the clay nice and loosened up, start forming in a spiral pattern. Now uh, weighing it. All right. When it comes to the point where you've got your your chunk nice and wedged up, um, gotta weigh it. Um, it's really tempting to just grab a chunk of clay and just go with it, but um, you might run into the situation where you uh, want to make the same thing again and the same size. And if you start with a different chunk of clay, different uh, weight every time. You're gonna make a different thing every time. So, very important. This is just a cheapo kitchen scale. It goes from one to 11 pounds. And uh, yeah, um, definitely get one if you're uh, wanting to make the same thing more than once. So, um, for learning to center, I recommend two pounds. Um, one pounds can be a little hard to get your hands around, so Go with two pounds and it'll be a little bit easier. So I already knew this was about four and a half pounds, so I'm just gonna cut it roughly in the middle, plop it on the scale. That's two and a quarter pounds, so we'll just uh, take an edge off of that. But I'm right on the mark, two pounds. Okay, so two pound chunk there. We'll set that down and then since I know that this one is probably two and a quarter, I'll take the same amount off and oh, shy about two ounces there. There we go, two on the mark. So now you got your two balls here. Just uh, bash them into a ball. Try not to trap any air when you do this. But just kind of make it into a ball shape. This is also important for centering when you're learning. Um, if it's a ball, it's already kind of in a shape that's friendly to center. So just go ahead and bash your ball into a sphere. And there you go. Okay, so I got these two uh, two pound chunks here. We're going to go ahead and get to the wheel and uh, see if we can't um, center these up. 
All right, we're at the wheel now, and uh, I'm just gonna go over the steps that I used to um, center a ball of clay. And uh, we're gonna start with our two pound ball that we just wedged up. And, uh, and yeah, I've got uh, another camera here that's gonna give the overhead perspective, so hopefully that's a little bit easier. Um, when I reference um, bracing my arm against my leg, usually means I've got my elbow dug into, my, into my, the bone of my leg there. So that kind of locks it into place, and I will use that while leaning forward against the splash pan here, um, just in case you can't see it on the overhead. Um, you should be able to, but we'll see. All right, so you've got your um, wheel head here, and just uh, it's got circles on it. You go ahead and use them. So you can just place your ball of clay there, give it a couple of wax straight down. Look centered. That's it. I'm no, just kidding. Okay. So um, for this, especially if you're beginning, I recommend uh, using a sponge like this. Um, just uh, wring it out so that most of the water's out of it, and you can use this to lubricate this while you uh, while you throw. So I just um, for the first, I'll just uh, put a little bit of water on top of this just to start, wring it out, and then you're going to want to um, make your hands like you're going to make a cone with this, okay? And you're going to push down, I push down right here with this pad, and then I hold this hand steady on the outside, okay? And then, uh, just if you need water, give yourself a little bit of water, and just kind of bear down into it make it into a cone shape, okay? It's not centered yet, but this is what you're aiming for. Okay. So now, with this, with this part of your hands, you're gonna squeeze the bottom. This is seals the bottom down to the wheel head, and then you can slowly bring, while you squeeze, bring it up into a cone like this, okay? Still not centered. You can see it's wobbling all around down here. Um, this is right, right here is the buttress, okay? You don't want that there. So you can take your sponge and just kind of squeeze it in. And, and hopefully that evens it out a little bit. And then once again, squeeze at the bottom with your the pads of your pinkies and pull up. Okay, this is making a cone. This is what's called coning up, okay? So just go ahead and you can cone up. Um, I like to cone up to whatever the height of the thing that I want to make is so if I'm sitting down and I'm gonna make a like a creamer or something which is like a little pitcher for cream um, I might I might bring it up to this this height here okay so once you've got your cone here it's like well it, the cone is centered right but I can't really make anything with this so the trick here is you're gonna with this hand you're gonna push forward okay you push forward and down. When you push forward and down, you might think that it's going to be wobbling all over the place, but it doesn't. It actually, it actually puts the clay into the center. So you just do that. When you get to the point where you can't push it forward anymore, then you're bracing with this hand and pushing down with, I push down right here with my thumb and make sure that you're, you've got enough lubrication there push down like that and so <clears throat> this hand is braced against the the wheel pan or the splash pan and my my leg is keeping it in place this hand is doing all the work um, shaping it okay so we're gonna do that again we're gonna squeeze the bottom and then pull it up into a cone I'm gonna do it again cone it all, all the way up to where the height of the thing that you want to make is Okay, and then bend it forward. Let's get some of the crust off my hand here. Okay, I, I put the sponge away for now, but bend it forward and push down. And um, you're like, oh, why, why bend it forward? Well, if you just push straight down, I'll show you kind of what what happens. So we'll cone it up here. 
So the target here is very small. Um, this is, you know, an inch. So if you're going to push straight down, all of a sudden you're, you're trying to push this tiny little centerpiece here, you're trying to push it straight down. Well, it, <laughs> good luck, it, it kind of wobbles around and stuff and you, you can start throwing it off center right away. If you bend it down, if you bend it over while you're pushing down, what happens is that this part um, is bent, but it's going to start stacking clay down at the bottom. So, I, I know you can't really see it, but you can feel it when it's happening. So, um, you've got it down into this kind of puck shape now, right? And this is pretty centered, but if you want to refine it so that it's really centered, use your fingertips here. And I, I hold my left hand steady, and then with my fingertips, I will dig into the side and pull them up towards the top like this, okay? And what that does is it, uh, the, the large or the small surface area of your fingertips can move more clay than a closed hand would. So all you're doing is moving clay up and, and to, up to the top, but you're, you're refine it, re refining the center. There you go. And then what I always do is once I've got it center, I take away the buttress here at the side. Because if you leave this clay that comes down like this, as you're working with it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to start sucking clay down into it just from gravity and the, the um, centripetal force that, uh, that the wheel provides. So you don't want that. So yeah, anyway, this is uh, centering the clay. So um, this is the probably the preferred method for a beginner is the coning up and then coning down. Going up, bend it over, and push it down. The whole time the left hand is bracing against the wheel pan and the splash pan in your leg. So you don't want your left hand to be moving at all. And then take off your buttress. There you go. So you can start working with that. Um, yeah. That is, uh, that is my method for centering. Um, it works really good, especially if it's uh, two pounds or more clay. With one pound, it's hard to cone up and cone down and stuff and, and keep it even. So yeah. Anyway, uh, that would be part one on centering. Thank you for watching.